There is no policy that says we want to destroy Al-Aqsa Israeli policy. The contrary. Israel is, uh, uh, is uh, doing absolutely everything to protect it. So please, do a little bit more research before you start chanting Al-Aqsa is in danger, because it's not. Yosef Haddad, Arab-Israeli activist, CEO of Together Vouch for Each Other. Thank you so much for joining me on Global Perspectives. Eli, thank you very much for having me. Yosef, you have an extraordinary story, and I'm so excited for our audience to learn more about you. Can we start from the beginning? Could you tell us where in Israel you were born and the childhood that you had that allowed you to become the man that you are today? Uh, first of all, I was uh, born in Haifa, which is the uh, largest mixed city in, uh, in Israel, and raised in Nazareth, which is the largest Arab city in, uh, in Israel. And I always found myself in between those two cities. My parents lived in Nazareth, the rest of my family and friends uh, lived in uh, Haifa. Uh, so I used to just uh, travel between those two cities, uh, playing football, what you call it in America, soccer. And through soccer, I met a lot of my friends. Uh, and since we played soccer in Haifa, and Haifa is mixed city, so we would have we would play together Jews, Arabs, whether Christians, Muslims, or Druze. Um, we play football together. And basically, the friendship that started as playing football together become more and more ended up with being really close friends and through that, I felt not only a proud Arab, but also proud Israeli, just like my other friends there over there. And this is literally how everything began. It's incredible sometimes to hear about the power of sports in people's lives. And so you, yourself, you had this incredible uh, upbringing that, uh, that made you, from what you're telling me, feel like a, a true Israeli. And you went on to do... Um, what I think is the greatest service that any Israeli can do for their country, you served in the IDF. Yes, true. Well, you know, you said it. I served in the IDF. I didn't serve in the JDF. I didn't serve in the Jewish Defense Force. I served in the Israeli Defense Force. And when the IDF protects the country, the IDF protects all its citizens, both Arabs and Jews. And unfortunately, when Hamas and Hezbollah and the Islamic Jihad attack Israel, they attack all its citizens, Arabs and Jews. And this is something is not fictional. It's facts. Uh, just to go back to 2006, during the Second Lebanon War, where I participated, actually. And, and, and I have a quite a fascinating story. Before I entered Lebanon, one of my friends from Nazareth called me and he told me, Yusuf, how do you feel going into Lebanon fighting your Arab brothers? And I said, I'm not going to fight my Arab brothers. I'm going to fight the terrorist organization Hezbollah. We did not agree. Later, when he came visit, to visit me in the hospital because I got injured in that war, the first thing he said to me is, I understand. I understand what you meant. Because during to the 2006 war against Hezbollah, 44 Israeli civilians were killed by Hezbollah rockets. Half of them were Arab Muslims Israelis. On my city, Nazareth, Rockets fell down, killed babies, injured dozens. So when I was there, I was protecting my country and I was protecting my society, both the Arabs and the Jews. Yosef, I have to say that you are a hero to many. Um, like you said, in the Lebanon war, you got injured and... Uh, and uh, fortunately, I think that uh, you've been healed. You've had some uh, a medical success since that time. Tell me a little bit about your fellow Israeli Arabs. When I was in Israel following the May 2021 Guardian of the Walls operation, I went to Akko and what I learned was that there is significant issues in terms of um, Israeli society and how Israelis and the Israeli Arabs, Jewish Israelis, Muslim Israelis, Christian Israelis, how, how they are interacting with each other. What's your take, Yosef, uh, on what's going on in Israeli society? Yeah, well, you know what? I I'm glad that you actually asked about what happened during May 2021 because there are so many um, misinformation. To begin, 
There were lynching between Arabs and Jews. Arabs lynched Jews and Jews lynched Arabs. But in Israel, there is 7 million Jews. There is 2 million Arabs. We cannot and we must not generalize everyone. Eventually, when the report from the police came, and don't think that I am, you know, easy on that, but in total, there was about a couple of thousands of Jews who participated in those riots, riots and about 6,000 from the Arab society who participated in also in the riots, most of them coming from East Jerusalem. And yes, including the riots that you saw in Lod, Yafo, and Akko by the police report. And this is our biggest problem. We have two minority extremist groups. They are louder, more violent, and they threat you. And you know what? We should be worried and afraid from them. But we must fight back because the truth is the majority of the silent voice, and this is the keyword, silent voice, we need to step up, speak out loud, and make sure that the extremists in both sides uh, 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 does not benefit and continue their agenda. This is a, a absolutely a vital for us in order for us to make the Israeli society better society. And keep in mind, the real partnership is already happening between Jews and Arabs daily, daily in Israel. So don't let the media or don't let the social media uh, give you a false, false information. The reality is simple. You come here and you see it in the hospitals, you see it in the markets, on the street, everywhere in Israel. Absolutely. And I've seen this coexistence myself when I visited Israel many times. But I want to stay on, on one point on this uh, a little bit longer, Yosef, which is that uh, what I found in my investigative reporting there was that apparently some of these Israeli Arab towns, like you just mentioned, Lod, Yaako, Yafo, have become in some ways no-go zones that we've seen in Europe, where Israeli police are not entering into these towns to try to create law and order. And we've just seen recent reports coming out of Israel that crime in Israeli Arab towns are skyrocketing for this very reason. So right. tell me, what do you think the Israeli government and Israeli police authorities need to be doing differently? Well, here's the thing. There is a responsibility to the Israeli government and the Israeli police, but there's also responsibility from our society and our readers. Therefore, I'm going to split my answer to two. The first responsibility is again on the country. And I really believe that in order for us to regain confidence and security in, in our society, there's three steps that the country must do. First one is punishment. Punishment, it means that today, if something happens and you go and stab someone, yeah, and you go in front of a judge, let's say the police did their job, they caught the stabber, they put him in front of the judge, the judge will literally release him and give him, you know, social work, uh, maybe three months in jail maximum. You cannot, you cannot handle violence and crime like this. We have, we must have a harsher punishment. Second, we need an actual uh, a unit, police unit, that knows how to deal with the crime in our society. And I'm not talking about the regular blue police, we call it. No, no, no. We want something like the border police. We want something with the elite unit that they know how to manage to get the job done. And after that, we must, we must put our uh, efforts into education because when we educate from age zero to handle uh, you know a, a conflict in a dialogue and not in violent this is something that will eventually help within the upcoming generations that's what i think the country should do and in terms of our leaders i mean take just a look about uh, at the joint list okay for those who don't know, the Joint List is an Arab political party, sits in the Israeli parliament, in the Knesset. The leader of that political party, his name is Ayman Oudi. Ayman Oudi, a few months ago, went to Jerusalem, did a video, and he called all the Arab Israelis who serve in the security forces in Israel to strip their uh, uniforms and throw their guns and stop serving the society, both Jews and Arabs in Israel. 
and he is a member of the Knesset. What kind of example he sets to the young generation when he said something like this. Therefore, we must also hold responsible our leaders from our communities to understand that, that what they're doing is only harming us. And when we manage, and inshallah in the future, we will manage to replace them with better leadership, we can literally see that the violence and the crime level in our society will be down. And I'm sure about it. Well, I, I think that all of us hope that that will be achieved because it's really heartbreaking to see stories uh, that have come out in the last few weeks of uh, innocents being killed in Israeli Arab towns. And so I, I hope that that situation does get under control soon. Yosef, I want to pivot now. I want to pivot to your role of CEO of Together Vouch for Each Other. I have seen you do incredible work uh, with this organization. One of the most touching moments that I followed was when you went to visit the Auschwitz-Birkenau death camps. And there is, um, I think, a, a powerful photo of you draped in the Israeli flag standing on the tracks that lead to the death camp. Can you tell us a bit about the work that you're doing and also that visit specifically? So Together Vouch for Each Other is an Arab Israeli organization. It was founded by Arab Israelis, uh, Christians, Muslims, and Druze. I'm the CEO of this organization. The whole idea is to bridge gaps between Jews and Arabs and to bring the Arab society closer to the Israeli society, to be an integral part of it. And despite the fact that we are not a political uh, organization, but we started this and it's actually, you know, continuing from what we spoke before. We started it because we saw that our leaders in our society are not doing enough for us. They're speaking about Gaza. They're speaking about Ramallah, but they're not speaking about Nazareth. They're not speaking about Haifa, Lod and Akko. We want to be first. We need to treat ourselves first. And this is from that point we started all this. Beside this, we also represent Israel outside of Israel. And as for Auschwitz, I think that was one of the unbelievable moments that I had in my uh, life. I know about the Holocaust. I know that six million Jews were killed by the Nazis, uh, but that's it. That's what, I, what, that's what I studied when I was in high school. That's it. I didn't know anything about it more than that. Yosef, can I interject oh. for just one minute? Can I interject yes. for one minute? And you were educated in Israeli schools, is that right? Yes, in an Arab, in an Arab Israeli school, correct. In an Arab Israeli school, uh, we, we just learned about it. So the Arab society in Israel do not uh, deny the Holocaust, but we don't know much about the Holocaust. And if you don't know about your neighbor, we cannot actually establish better partnership and better relationship. And therefore, we decided to together vouch for each other to actually bring, not only to the Arab Israelis, but to the rest of the Arab world, and teach them about and educate about what happened to the Jewish people. And we were, when we were there, Eli, I have to be honest with you, I thought that I knew even 5%. I did not know, and I didn't know anything. When I went there and I heard the stories and saw it in my own eyes, and I took with me 30 Arab Israelis, not even one single eye left dry from the stories that we heard. It was an unbelievable moment. And the top of that moment, two actually, we did a ceremony in Arabic in Auschwitz and we broadcast it to the Arab world to a channel of I-24 and it was unbelievable. Further than that, the day after, we marched in March of the living with Jews and Arabs and together we sang, we will bring peace to everyone. This is something unbelievable. This is the way to fight anti-Semitism and racism at the same time. Incredibly so. And, and as they say in Hebrew, Yashar Koach to you. God bless you, Yosef, for what you're doing. Um, not only did you lead this delegation to Auschwitz, but some of the other work I noticed that you've done, which I think has been very powerful, in the most recent conflict between Hamas and Israel, there was an attempt to make it seem like Israel uh, does not allow Muslims access to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Temple Mount. And this is, um, this is a lie in a narrative that is propelled throughout 
throughout the Middle East, North Africa region, trying to incite the Muslim world against Israel. You did some incredible work showing the reality of what was going on. Can you tell us, Yosef, um, a bit more your view on this issue of Al-Aqsa slash the Temple Mount? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Al-Aqsa is in danger. I've been hearing that since I was born. And this is a a complete uh, lie. Al-Aqsa never in danger. Israel is actually doing absolutely everything to protect Al-Aqsa, and Israel proved uh, to do so. Um, And in fact, this is uh, something that Hamas, and before Hamas, uh, the Mufti of Jerusalem, and Islamic Jihad, and more and more terrorist organizations used to inflammatory the uh, area in order to promote their uh, agenda. Uh, Anyone who visited Jerusalem would see how the Israeli police enforce the laws against Jews. Against Jews. The Israeli police, not the Palestinians, not the Jordanian Waqf. It is the Israeli police. There is no policy that says we want to destroy Al-Aqsa, Israeli policy. The contrary. Israel is is, uh, doing absolutely everything to protect it. So please, do a little bit more research before you start chanting Al-Aqsa is in danger, because it's not. We've seen uh, uh, during last Ramadan, uh, when hundreds of thousands of Muslims prayed in Al-Aqsa and had uh, an absolutely amazing Eid al-Fitr. And not only that, a lot of the Palestinians from the West Bank and Gaza got permits from Israel in order for them to come inside to Jerusalem and celebrate the uh, Eid. So come on. Well, Yosef, my question is then, how can we get this truth out to the Muslim world? So basically, what we are doing right now is trying to spread that message outside. Now, we are, you know, for I'd say for the good and for the bad, the social media is a platform to pass these messages. And I'm very lucky to tell you that um, there's a lot of uh, uh, people from the Arab world, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq. Uh, even I have uh, followers from Iran. Yeah following me and seeing the content that I create and I uh, post and uh, on my social media. And a lot of people, you know, uh, have told me that uh, based on the information that I provided, they literally changed their perspective. But the reality also talks about the fact that, for instance, in Israel, you have 20% of the population are Arabs, but the 30% of the doctors in Israel are Arabs. More than the percentage of the population. 50% of the pharmacists are Arabs. In Israel, you have a a, a Supreme Court judge, a former Supreme Court judge, Salim Jubran, who sent to prison a prime minister, a Jewish prime minister and a Jewish president for committing crimes. You know, this goes into the myth of Israel being an apartheid state. You know, I I laugh every time I hear this definition about uh, about Israel because it couldn't be further from, uh, from the truth. And the only one thing you need to do is just come here. You'll see for yourself. Exactly right. Yosef, also you brought up Iran, and uh, that brings me to when uh, you and I met each other about uh, a little bit over a year ago. Um, I helped to lead a delegation of Iranian Muslims coming to Israel for the first time since the 1979 Islamic Revolution. And you spent some time with uh, one of the delegates, Ahmed Batebi. Tell me a little bit about your experience talking with Ahmed. You want to hear about a hero? Go and check that story because his story is unbelievable. You know, the strength to go from being a prisoner and then to, to, to escape and then to be a, a loud and clear voice against extremism. For me, you know, to see that there is a lot of Iranians that they are far, far away from the Ayatollah and from that uh, devastating regime. I know that the Iranian people are amazing. Uh, Israel does not have any problem with the Iranian people. Israel has a problem with the Iranians' leaders who wants to destroy Israel. We will not allow them. And when I say we will not allow them, I do mean the Iranian people and the Israeli people. I look forward to that day when we can reunite the Iranian people and the Israeli people. Yosef, our time is running out. So my last question to you is, what is your forecast for more peace between Israel and her Arab neighbors, as well as relations within the country between the Israeli Jewish population and the Israeli Arab society. 
let's start from inside as well. I really believe that eventually, and, and, and this is my chance to, uh, you know, advance the, uh, or to put the word that I like to, to use a lot. Coexisting, it's really nice between the Israelis and the Emiratis, between the Israelis and the Jordanians and the Egyptians. In Israel, the best word to describe it is partnership, sharaki, shutfut. Uh, so I really believe that the partnership here in Israel uh, is going to uh, go to the next levels because the young generation is fed up. We know that this is our country, Arabs and Jews. We want to be in this country and we will be together in this country. The partnership has already exist. The next step is to bring it to the level of politics. We will arrive there soon. Uh, so this is something that I believe in. I really see that happening in the future. As for the Middle East, you know, it started with the Abraham Accords and we saw that now Morocco, we have the UAE, Bahrain and more. I really believe that eventually uh, Saudi Arabia will be joining formally, you know, and be part of it as well. I believe that other countries will uh, join because eventually Israel is here to stay. Israel is part of the Middle East, the Arab countries starting to understand that. And don't forget that we have a common enemy and it is the Iranian leaders, the regime, that they want to put destruction in the Middle East. We will not allow them. When I say we, it's also the Arab countries that in the Middle East. Therefore, I really hope for better future in both camps. Well, amen to that, Yosef. And uh, inshallah. I hope that, yes, inshallah, I hope that uh, your influence continues to spread. And so again, I thank you for all that you do, Yosef, every day. And thank you for joining me on Global Perspectives. Absolutely. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much.